They have been freed from slavery and are now free men about to enter the promised land. But Moses gives a warning. And this is in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 3 through 4. You shall not make no, you shall make no covenant with the people of the land and show no favor to them. Furthermore, you shall not intermarry with them, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. Again, this is Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. Fast forward several hundred years. And we find Israel in direct rebellion against God's commands. The sons, Judges chapter 3 verse 5 through 6 says, The sons of Israel lived among the Canaanites. And they took their daughters for themselves as wives and gave their own daughters to their sons and served their gods. Okay, read that. Judges chapter 3 verse 5 through 6. It probably didn't seem so harmful at first. Perhaps the Israelites felt like they weren't there weren't enough women or there weren't enough men to go around. However, they rationalized it. The Israelites formed covenants between themselves and people who neither knew nor served God. In so doing, they were led astray. Over and over in scripture we see this theme repeated. Two are Samson who repeatedly sought out unbelieving women a choice which in the end destroyed him judges chapter 14 and solomon the wisest man in the world until his many wives led him to worship other gods so these are two men samson and solomon and read um about solomon in first kings first kings chapter 11 Uniting ourselves to people who do not love, follow, or submit to Christ is direct disobedience. Is direct disobedience. That is written in the Bible. Intimacy is impossible without spiritual unity. If Christ is truly king of our lives, our most intimate selves should be submitted to his influence. How then can we... Unite a spirit-led soul to one in rebellion against God. This rubs people the wrong way because no matter how respectful, sweet, or loving an unbelieving partner is, he is at odds with Christ. He is in rebellion. But if we call ourselves Christians, we're saying we believe the Bible is our final authority. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that without Christ we are unresponsive in our transgressions. Conformed to the world, living by the cravings of our flesh and by nature children of wrath. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. This is who we are without Jesus. This is who everyone is apart from Christ. Therefore, those of us in Christ cannot be in a harmonious, God-pleasing relationship with an unbeliever. There's no fellowship between light and darkness. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. The Greek word for fellowship in this passage literally means contact or intimacy. Through Paul's inspired words, we learn that intimacy with unbelievers is not just discouraged. It's impossible. God knows this. It's why he commanded the Israelites to marry marry within the household of faith. And it's why he inspired Paul to issue the same command. This is for our spiritual protection. Righteousness has nothing in common with a person who believes they are good enough apart from God. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Bilal? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? 2 Corinthians 6, 14-15 no relationship apart from Christ can be truly good. Mark 
chapter 10, verse 18. No relationship apart from Christ can be truly good. No love apart from Christ is true love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 through 17. It may look like these things from the outside, but will never be unified within. Okay, things may look good from the outside, but nothing will be unified, unified from within. Okay, your body is a sanctuary of worship. Paul's mandate to be equally yoked isn't found in a list of commandments. It is written. It was written to the struggling church at Corinth, a group of people who, a group of people confused about how to live for Christ in a corrupt world. That's why he took the time to explain why equal yoking, equally yoking, is essential to the Christian walk. All right, what agreement can exist between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Second Corinthians 6 verses 16 through 17. Your body is the new temple. As a follower, a follower of Christ, the Spirit of God dwells in you. That is why God calls us to come out from among them and separate. He's not telling us to be unloving. We are called to love unbelievers. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 12. God is calling us to love him more than we love our own desire for a relationship. He's calling us to be a place of worship. This is a call to reconsider your view of God and dating. God cares about our relationships because he cares about us. He cares about our purity because that is what keeps us in a relationship with him. Our holiness preaches the gospel louder than our words. Unequal yoking hinders our walk with God. The one thing we need more than anything else. And I am going to, if if you don't see it already, um, I'm going to put this link down here um, to make sure you read this because there are a lot of um, comments um, in the comments section of this article as well. And also, if you are already married to an unbeliever, the Bible um, speaks about your next step. Start by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, if you are already married to an unbeliever. And there are, it says, 30 comments here. So um, check the link out and read this article um, for yourself. But I found this article to be um, very, very, very in- interesting and um, inspiring as well. So, um I mean, we we are to love our our brother, love love God with all our whole heart, soul, mind, everything. Then we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. So we cannot, um, again, Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen through eighteen. But just fourteen says, "Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers." Unbelievers, unbelievers, what? fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness so um what does a uh, uh, um a christian have with someone that's not a christian you know you can't believe part of the word you can't believe that um jesus came down and jesus performed many miracles and everything and then say that he was just a man who walked the earth because that's not true he was the son of god all of these scriptures that i read go back and listen again to the show um if you if you if you like and write down the scriptures and go through the bible yourself 
All of these saying the Son of God, Son of God, Jesus Christ. Um, Gabriel um, coming down to Mary and telling her she was going to um, conceive and she was a virgin. She said, how could it be? And and um, he also told her that Elizabeth, um, her older cousin, um, was also pregnant as well uh, with John the Baptist and, and um, two miracles going on at one time. And so, you know, all of this happened. She said, in the, in 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 Gabriel told her, Holy Spirit is is going to come upon you. God is going to shower upon you. You're going to end up. You're going to be pregnant. And in in also told her, you are to call him Jesus. He's the Son of God, Son of the Most High. So all of this, and then also we read scriptures where God says, "This is my beloved Son. Listen to my Son." John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him, you shall not die, you shall have everlasting life, eternal life. See, this is part of the salvation package. Part of the salvation package that you have once you become saved. And accept Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior. You have eternal life, you're saved. You have an eternal peace. You have um, 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 deliverance from temporal evil, bad thoughts. Um, you have so many things. Healing. Um, you don't have to be down here sick and everything because the blood of Jesus. Jesus lives with inside you. I read about the branch and the vine. All of these things. So, you know, we just can't just take parts of the Bible and believe parts and not others. And there are some that do that, but we cannot. We see um, that the Bible is is definitely, definitely genuine. Um, reading 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. By inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctoring, for reproof. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we see right here the Bible is true. It it states it right here. So these are things that I wanted to get out. Be careful. Um, Um... not to say we we, we, we we don't love our brothers and our sisters, but be careful, um, Christians and non-Christians, believers, unbelievers, all of that. Be careful of your association. Been there, done that, guilty of that myself. You know, but... Um, that is the flesh that is that is we have to pray about it and and God keeps us. You know, and just just pray and hope that others as well accept Jesus Christ into their life as the Lord and Savior. Um, have said the sinner's prayer or the salvation prayer. Um, I um, um I don't call a sinner's prayer a salvation prayer. You know, ask um, God to come into your life right now, wherever you're at, wherever you're at. You can repeat after me right now and say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask right now that you come into my life as my Lord and as my Savior. I accept you today, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and as my Savior. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you repeated that, congratulations um, for coming and accepting Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior, for being saved. Uh, pray, pray, pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. And and. God will lead you the right way. Um, God, um, read your Bible every single day, every single day. Stay prayed up. Stay close to the Lord. Stay close to the Lord in prayer. 
in prayer. And right here you prayed to Jesus, directly to Jesus, asking him to come into your life as your Lord and Savior.